Hi. So a while ago, I did a sort of quick and dirty explanation of how these things that the earlier versions of the AIM-9 Sidewinder missile used to use for roll stabilization called rollerons. And I said I would eventually like to do a somewhat more rigorous explanation showing some actual uh, diagrams of angular momentum vectors and things like that. So I'm uh, going to do that today. And the short version is they rely on something called gyroscopic precession in order to stabilize the missile, uh, not by the gyroscopic effect uh, of this little, because this is just a little tiny wheel, right? Um, so it's not like a gyroscope that stabilizes by just, you know, being a gyroscope so that it keeps pointing in the same direction. It actually takes advantage of some physics to not provide active stabilization in the sense that an electronic system would, but it actually moves the flight control surface to stabilize the missile. And my original video was made in response to Smarter Every Day because he sort of just walked up to a Sidewinder missile on display and misunderstood how they actually operate. But today we're going to go into more detail than I did previously. And if you're not familiar with how gyroscopic precession works, uh, well, one, there's tons of videos all over the internet explaining it, but I also did my own explanation uh, a few weeks ago, so I'll link to that in the description. Uh, you might want to pause and take a look at that if you don't already know about gyroscopic precession, because we're going to be sort of assuming you know more or less how it works today. So how do these things use gyroscopic precession? Well, the key here is they have to stabilize the missile in roll, right? Because the missile already has control surfaces up front, because the missile knows where it is and where it isn't. And it uses these control surfaces to point itself in pitch and in yaw uh, towards its uh, target, which is generally an enemy warplane. And so, well, what about roll? Well, nowadays, modern missiles have an inertial measurement unit, essentially uh, a gyroscope that is used uh, just to measure the roll uh, of the missile as well as the pitch and the yaw uh, and just the position too. It, and then there's a digital computer that processes all that information and can stabilize the missile in uh, all three axes. But when they originally developed this missile, they didn't have that option because they could have built an analog computer to do that, but uh, this is a very small missile, and it would not have been feasible to cram all of that uh, into <laughs> such a sm in such a tiny thing. Whereas comparison, uh, this is, I mean, these are both obviously scale models, but uh, this is a roughly to scale uh, model of the AIM-7 Sparrow missile, and, and this missile does not have rollerons. It uh, is a much bigger, heavier missile, and I'm actually not 100% sure if the original version of the Sparrow missile used rollerons, or if it was heavy enough that they just used an uh, inertial measurement unit with an analog guidance computer, uh, because it, it has these very lo these are actually wings in addition to being in addition to being control surfaces. These actually provide lift uh, to help the missile fly to its target, and so uh, that's something I'm not sure of. If anybody knows if this had uh, an IMU on board or if it just relied on how big and chalky these wings were to prevent it from rolling, and just the fact that it's a bigger, heavier missile. But there was uh, neither enough inertia nor enough space for an IMU in something like the Sidewinder. And to make matters worse, in the old versions of the Sidewinder, wider, they had a, basically a, a, single, a single pixel camera for an infrared detector, and that one pixel would spin around scanning different parts of the sky, and depending on you know, when it picked, when in its rotation it picked up a signal is that is, it would, based on that, um, you know, and synchronizing its rotation with an analog guidance computer, it would move the control fins towards the hottest thing it saw. Uh, modern versions have essentially just an infrared imaging camera, and then there's a digital uh, algorithm run in a digital computer that uh, determines where the missile should go. And, and then there's also modern radar guided missiles, like this is a little model of the uh, AIM-120 AMRAAM missile, uh, and this, all, you see, this also has relatively small control surfaces, um, but it's a modern missile, so this definitely would have just a separate inertial measurement unit to make sure the missile doesn't roll around and tracks its target. So how do you stabilize this thing, though? Well, that's where the rollerons come in, and so if you think about it, 
if the missile is, you know, flying this way, say, towards me or over my shoulder, hopefully it's not going to hit me in the face because it is a, a missile with a warhead. Well, what if the missile starts rolling, say, this way from your perspective counterclockwise? Well, how do you correct that? Well, if you think about it in terms of something like an, an airplane wing, which I'll just hook up the little servo tester here so that we can take a look at that. Make sure I don't wire it backwards. So let's say the, uh, let's say the, for you, the, the wing on your left, uh, which since it's coming towards me, that would be the proper direction. So the, the le that would be the left wing, right? Let's say the left wing starts dropping. Well, we need to drop, we actually need to drop then the left aileron, right, to pull that wing back up. Versus if this wing starts coming up, we need to bring up that left aileron to bring the wing back down. Right. So, same is true of the Sidewinder missile, right? If we have the missile starting to spin this way, we need the rolleron to kick over this way, right? Which I have this little 3D printed models that are expanded, right? And so we're gonna, first we're gonna analyze something like this where the uh, hinge is just at a 90 degree angle, right? If this, this circle <laughs> toilet paper tube is the missile body and it's only hinged in this axis. And if you look at pictures of the very earliest versions of the Sidewinder, uh, they were hinged at 90 degrees like this. And actually one of the things that uh, smarter every day wasn't quite sure of is why uh, these little why why there's this little 45 degree cut in in the rollerons for most versions because um, only the very earliest versions had that 90 degree and most of them are cut like this where they have this 90 degree they were sorry this 45 degree uh, this 45 degree cut uh, and it's not 45 degrees on the corner like this right it's this sort of internal 45 degree cut so that the roller on uh, hinges back and forth like this. And that's basically to stabilize in pitch and in yaw. And I'll explain in a few minutes why that's necessary, but it's easier to understand the original version, uh, which is probably why it was the original version, um, where it's just at a nine degree angle. So if the missile say is coming this a ways and it starts, uh, try to line these up as best I can here. The missile is heading this away, is towards me, away from you, the camera's perspective, and let's say it starts rolling uh, this way. Well, then, right, you know, the roller on needs to come over this way to compensate, right, because then the aerodynamic forces will push it back this way, and then the missile will roll back to vertical, or if you want to look at it with the, this thing off to the, the side horizontally so that it's the same as when it was with the, uh, with the aircraft wing, uh, you know, if this one starts dropping, then this one has to come down to lift that wing and bring it back to a neutral position. So how do you achieve that, right? Because this is where Destin got it wrong, right? Is that he was saying that it just relies on the fact that, you know, so the key is that there's this little doohickey at the back, the back, right? There's the actual roller on wheel, right? And there's little tooths, teeth, <laughs> tooths. These little teeth sit out in the airstream and as a result, this thing spins really fast and it develops quite a lot of angular momentum. And so that will give it all the properties of a gyroscope, right? And one of the properties of something with angular momentum or a gyroscope is that it doesn't want to change the direction that it's spinning, right? And you have to, excuse me, impart a torque on it in order to get it to change the way that it's spinning. But where he got it wrong is he was saying how like, oh, it just stays in the same position. Well, that actually doesn't do anything for roll, right? It's hinged this way, right? When the missile is, you know, rolling, right? Because this is, this is, this is the roll axis of the missile, right? It's like this. And the, you know, the, the roller on is, is fixed, right? It, it can't, it can't sort of move the, it can't hinge back and forth that way. It can hinge back and forth this way, but that's actually good, right? Because we want, when it starts to roll, we want it to hinge over this way and pull us back into the orientation we were in. Uh, or again, if it makes it easier to visualize if it starts doing this we want it to come down do this if it goes up we want it to come up and do this so it actually has to basically lead out in front right it's basically leading out in in the in the direction 
uh, of the turn. And so how, you, how do you get it to do that? Well, that's where the magic of gyroscopic precession comes in. And so now we're going to bring up my Blender skills, where you will see the beautiful rendering showing the angular momentum, hopefully. So, all right, let me make space so that we can see everything on screen. So if the missile is flying, say, like this, and let's say it starts to roll clockwise, right? And we want it to roll back so that it's in the same orientation. So see see what happened there? Where it starts to roll, the roller on kicks over, and then it rolls back. Uh, it wouldn't actually be like that. I've sort of slowed everything down and also massively exaggerated all the angles so that it's easier to see and also it acts more like a roll damper so you don't actually want it to kick back like that because then it would sort of roll back and forth like this uh, you want it to just sort of slow down the roll rate so that it just very slowly rolls uh, and the key is that you want it to be rolling much slower than the little single pixel infrared detector that's spinning around in the nose is spinning but you know the principle still applies right we roll this way the roller on kicks over it pushes the roll back the other way, although it really would just slow it down. And so looking at that in the rendering, you can see how the rollerons all move in coordination. Now, why does that happen? Well, remember, the key to gyroscopic precession is that the little wheel at the back already has angular momentum, right? If it weren't already spinning, it would just, well, it would just sit loose in the wind, right? But because it's already spinning, when we impart a torque on it, that angular momentum from the torque we're imparting is going to get added to the angular momentum it already has, right? And so looking at it from the underside, uh, which maybe I should have rendered it from the, the nose, but it's easier to see the rollerons when it's rendered from the bottom. And you see... It, okay, each one has an angular momentum vector, right? Because the rule is that if something is spinning counterclockwise as viewed from your perspective, the angular momentum vector is pointing towards you, right? And uh, sort of one way to remember this is uh, if you take, you know, like a, a screw with standard threads, which are called right-handed threads, um, you know, and you are screwing that down away from you, then it's clockwise versus if you're unscrewing it towards you, that would be counterclockwise. And there's something called the right hand rule that you can use, but I tend to think of things in terms of just counterclockwise and clockwise. Uh, although it's kind of confusing sometimes because counterclockwise is actually the positive direction. And I don't know, I'm left-handed, so you can actually use your left hand to do the right hand rule. You just have to add a minus sign to everything. It, it, it all gets confusing, but it's all perfectly consistent, trust me. And so the roller on is spinning based on which way the wind is flowing, right? So it would be spinning from my perspective clockwise, so the angular momentum vector is pointed that way. And from your perspective, it's spinning counterclockwise, so the angular momentum vector is pointing towards you, right? And so then when we bring it over with all four, it looks like that, which, again... I wish that I could render it from the nose, but then I'd have to make the whole body transparent or you wouldn't be able to see anything. And so how do we then visualize what happens when it starts to roll? Well, if you already have all four of those vectors and it starts to roll, let's just look at what happens to the vectors real quick. Well, it's, it's going to roll over and then roll back. And you'll notice that when that happens, the rollerons change their angle, and as a result, each of those angular momentum vectors also changes its direction, right? Because if the angular momentum vector is pointing uh, straight out, say, you know, towards you, right? And, uh, or maybe it's easier if you look at an edge on like this, you know, so then the angular momentum vector is pointing that way, right and then it's going to continue to point you know perpendicular to the uh plane of rotation and in that direction right so if the roll run goes that way it points the angular momentum vector is pointing that way well how do we get it to point that way so that it 
kicks out in the direction we need it to so that the missile gets stabilized. Well, the key is that we need to add a torque in the right direction, and it turns out that if you hinge the roller rollerons that way, the torque is in the right direction. And so, if you want to actually do, like, a free body diagram, it gets a little bit wonky, um, because there's what's called forces of constraint. Um, but the... There's, there's a very easy way to keep track of it, which is, again, just clockwise and counterclockwise. We don't really need to do the right-hand rule with a force diagram, although you can, but you need to solve for forces of constraint, right? Because this is not really uh, a free body, right? It's it's constrained by, by, the hin by the hinge, and the hinge imparts kind of weird forces, right? Um, and it's just kind of backwards from what you'd normally expect. Because normally, for a given torque, the closer you are to the center of rotation, the more force will be exerted by a lever uh, pushing out from what's exerting the torque. Uh, but in this case, it's the opposite, right? Where more force is imparted uh, further away uh, from the axis of rotation so that the uh, sort of fin body can move in the same direction as the, as the hole missile is starting to roll and again you have to add all the forces of constraint to solve for that but if you if you do solve it all and you want a, a somewhat challenging exercise you can go and do that and so once you do that then you get that we have say if the missile is starting to roll this way and i chose this way because then the vector is pointing toward towards you so you can see it <laughs> So if it starts to roll from my perspective clockwise or your perspective counterclockwise, then that means there will be an angular momentum vector pointing that way towards you. And so then we already have an angular momentum vector from the uh, roller on pointing that way. So we have that way plus that way, which is, you know, going from this to like this, or if we bring it up here from like this to like this, uh, or sorry, from, yeah, from like this to like this, which is exactly what we need. No, sorry. <laughs> From like this, and then it rolls to like this, which is exactly what we need to for the roller on to kick out and stabilize back to where we were. And so that's how it works. You start with some angular momentum. It's based on counterclockwise rotation of this thing is which way the vector points. So it would be uh, that way, <laughs> right? Because it's spinning this way, which is counterclockwise from this side, counterclockwise from that side, right? So it's, it's facing that way. And then you add to that this way. And so then it comes forward like this. Roller on kicks out this way. Missile comes back to where it needs to be. So again, if you want to actually solve the free body diagram, it's complicated because it's not really a free body, it's a constrained body. The forces of constraint are complicated, but again, if the missile as a whole is rolling this way, then the torque vector that it imparts on all of its components is going to be that way because there's forces and torques of constraint that keep everything, because everything is bolted together, right? <laughs> okay. So that explains how this 90 degree style will stabilize roll by kicking out that way the way it's supposed to. Um, all right, well, what about this style though? What does this weird 45 degree hinge do, which is what uh, was unexplained in the original Smarter Everyday video, although he also just got how roll rons work in general wrong. Well, this is to stabilize pitch and yaw, and you'll notice that the missile already has control in pitch and in yaw, so why bother? And it's basically because gyroscopic, not precession, but just the fact that this is an object with a lot of angular momentum does also keep it in the same plane, because when it rolls, the hinge won't let it move. Right, the hinge only moves this way. But if the missile, if the missile say is changing its changing its yaw, well then you have a problem because this is going to want to stay in the same place. But now it's actually destabilizing, right? Because if if say if say the missile kicks over that way, and now 
this control surface is out that way, it's going to push it even further that way. So the rollerons will actually destabilize pitch and yaw if you put them at that 90 degree angle, which is sort of a, I think, mistake they made in the very early models. And it's not so bad that it, they are non-functional, but uh, they sort of add this 45 degree cut in order to use gyroscopic precession to also stabilize pitch and yaw, but it's not to stabilize them in the sense of, like, the overall stability. Well, it is for the overall stability of the missile, but it's basically so that the rollerons are awash with regards to pitch and yaw. They don't destabilize or stabilize. But if you do that 90-degree cut, they're destabilizing. So how does that work? Well, same exact idea, right? Except now, because of this 45-degree cut, there's different forces of torques and constraint. But exact same idea, right? It can only hinge in this specific axis, which is at a 45 degree angle. And now it's still got the same angular momentum, right? This thing is spinning counterclockwise, so angular momentum vector pointing towards you. And then as a result, what's going to happen if it starts to, uh, let's make a vert, let's say the missile starts to, you know, yaw over or pitch over this way. Well, now we've got an angular momentum vector pointing that way, and we're trying to add to it an angular momentum vector, which is pointing this way, right? So that way plus this way. So that's going to make it want to uh, kick over this ways, which is going to push the missile back in pitch slash yaw. So the exact same idea, but just with this 45 degree cut. And it has to be this weird 45 degree interior cut instead of being like cut across the corner this way um, because it wouldn't work this way. This way would actually make the situation even worse. But uh, with this 45 degree interior cut, it's it's just the, right, the, just the proper angle, right? Because angular momentum vector from the, the little wheel is always facing that way. And then when it pitches over like this, um, we're going to add an angular momentum vector from the body of the missile that is pointing that way. And so that makes the roller on want to kick, kick over like this. But if it were hinged on a 45 degree, it would actually kick over in, uh, yeah, it would, it would, it, it would not kick over properly. It would sort of like go, go flappy in the way. <laughs> um, and I'm actually trying to think it, it, because it, uh, it would instead be trying to, it would still be trying to go, um, you know, add this vector to that vector. And it, oh yes, it would be trying to go, no, it would still try to go that way. Um, oh right, but then, but then that way, instead of going out on this side, it would be coming out on, uh, on this side instead, um, because it would be, you know, going like this to like this. And that would be an aerodynamic force on this side, uh, which would actually um, cause it to pitch over even more. Yeah, so it, it would be destabilizing if it were cut the other way. So that's why rollerons rely on gyroscopic precession, not the stability of gyroscopes to stabilize the uh, Sidewinder missile. Uh, now they just have inertial measurement units and digital com guidance computers so they don't need those anymore and electronics have all been miniaturized so they can cram anything they want to even to, into a small missile like the Sidewinder uh, and also the something that Smart Every Day did mention is that the modern Sidewinder has thrust vectoring too which actually doesn't necessarily provide roll control it just provides a lot more control and it's just a much more sophisticated missile so but they they used these uh well into the uh very late models of the sidewinder so they were a very effective technique for stabilizing the missile uh anyways that's how they work uh yeah thanks for watching